To change the player order on a Nintendo Switch is very simple to do. You can tell by the lights that this is player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4 and player 5. Let's say we want to swap player 4 and player 2. So this one becomes 2 and this one becomes 4. Because they might want to swap where they are on Mario Kart for example. All we would have to do is turn off the Joy-Cons. To do this we just tap the sync button and then they will turn off. And then we just need to turn this one on first and it will jump to player two. To turn it on, you just need to tap any of the buttons and turn this one and it will jump to player four. Okay. And if you're doing it on the pro controller, pretend we want to swap five with number one. We just need to tap the sync button up here and then that will turn off and tap this one here and that will turn off. Hit this one and it will jump to number one. And this one will jump to number five. There you go. To enable your Switch to turn on your TV without using a remote control, your TV has to support CEC. Now on the Nintendo Switch we have to go to System Settings, we have to go down to where it says TV Output, and then we need to go to Match TV Power State and make sure that that is turned on. On our remote control we need to go to Menu or Settings, whichever your one is. On this TV it's under Options, and then I'm going to go to CEC and make sure that's turned on. Now if I was to turn the Nintendo Switch off, when I turn it back on again, it will automatically turn on the TV. So let's turn off the TV now, leave the remote control there, and now you can see that the switch is off. When I press the home button, it will turn the switch on, and after about 15 seconds, turn the TV on. It will be exactly the same if I was to be playing it in handheld mode, and then when you dock it, it will automatically turn your TV on as well. And then, what it should allow is when you turn off your TV, it should also then turn off the Nintendo Switch. There you go. To adjust the time before your Nintendo Switch goes to sleep, we can change that in the settings. So let's go to System Settings, and then we're going to go down to where it says Sleep Mode. And then you see here it says Auto Sleep, playing on the console screen. By default it's 10 minutes. We can change this to 1 minute, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 minutes, or never. And Auto Sleep, playing on the TV screen. It's at 1 hour. We can change that again to 2 hours, 3 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours or never. And there's one more setting that isn't really relevant at the moment, but it will be when more apps get released, like for example Netflix. It says disable auto sleep while playing media content. So at the moment that is off, but if you were to turn it on, then it means you could, for example, watch a box set of 10 hours and then it won't turn off. To access the recovery menu on the Nintendo Switch, we first of all need to shut it down. So press and hold the power button for around two seconds, and it will bring up this menu here. Go to power options, and power off. Then again, after two seconds, it will have fully shut down, and what we need to do is we need to press and hold the plus and the minus of the volume at the same time. So I'm going to hit both of them with my thumb, so I'm pressing them both down, and I just need to tap the power button, and then I'm going to keep my finger on the plus and minus until the Switch logo comes up. And now I can let go of that and it will enter recovery mode. Here we can update the system, restore factory settings without deleting save data or restore factory settings. So if we were going to sell it, we would do this one bottom one here. If we're having problems with our Nintendo Switch, major problems, then we would do this one and we will still keep our game saves. If you want this just to have a look to see what this menu is and you don't want to do anything, then just go to the power button there and then it will exit it. When you turn it back on again, you will see the switch will come on as normal. To update your controllers on the Nintendo Switch, we need to make sure they're connected to the system and turned on. So they will be able to update wirelessly, so they don't have to be actually slid onto the Nintendo Switch in order to update. And that's how you would also update your Pro Controller. So, all we need to do is go to System Settings. And then on the left hand side we need to go down to Controllers and Sensors. And then we need to go to Update Controllers, and it says here Update Connected Controllers. And it says all connected controllers are already up to date. If they weren't, they would just go through and update one by one. To take a screenshot, we just need to tap the capture button, which is this button here. To take a video, you're going to hit the same button, but for a little over a second. But it's only going to work on certain games, and it won't work, for example, on the home screen. So if you were to try it on Rock and Racing Grand Prix, it won't allow you. It will come up with that same message up there. But if you were to try it on Zelda or Mario Kart, then it's going to work. So let me just show you that. So let's say now, if you've done something and you want to share it with somebody because you've done something that's funny or 
you're proud of, then you just hold down this button here. You can carry on playing the game, and you see at the moment it says saving up there. Now it's going to save up to 30 seconds, but that doesn't mean it's going to save the whole 30 seconds. If you've only been playing the game for 10 seconds, it's only going to save the last 10 seconds. If I was to do it again now, because it hasn't been 30 seconds since that first one, it's only going to save, for example, 15 or 20 seconds. Now to check it, you just need to go to your album, and then you can see here, I've got the snapshot that I did, the screenshot here. Then the first video was only 7 seconds, the second one was 14. If I'd been playing it, for example, for a minute, then it would have saved the last 30 seconds. If you've done something that you like, you have to press that button within 30 seconds, otherwise it's going to be lost. To follow a news channel on the Nintendo Switch, we just need to go down to News. And then we're going to tap up here for Find Channels. And you will see that every game that you've got, you will automatically be following that channel. For example... Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you wish to unfollow that one because you might not want to receive information about it, you can just tap it and then you will no longer be following it. But I do want to follow that one. Now let's say if you want to follow a channel that you don't actually own the game off, then for example if I uh, want to do Super Mario Odyssey, you can see here I can just go to follow channel and then I will get the news through about that channel when it's released. To adjust the size of the screen so that the Nintendo Switch will take up the whole of the TV screen, we just need to go down to System Settings and press A. And then we need to go all the way down to where it says TV Output and press A and then go down to Adjust Screen Size and again press A. Here we can move it up and down to fit the size of the screen that you have. So if you look at the edge of the blue arrows, we want to do it so it goes to the very edge of the TV screen. If you go too far, then you can bring it back a little bit. So on this TV, I need to put it to 100% and then it's perfect. I then need to press A and then A again. And then that will be stored. And if you have a look now, everything is like it should be. You would only really need to do this if you were moving from one TV to another because normally it works just fine. But if you had it set up on an older TV, you might have had to reduce the TV screen size and putting it back onto a modern TV, you might have had to increase it again. To increase the volume coming through the headphones on the Nintendo Switch, there is a setting that we can change. So at the moment, I've got the volume up full here and I've also got the inline volume here up full as well. And it is loud, but some people like to listen to loud music, although there is a chance it can damage your hearing, or you might struggle with your hearing, in which case then you might want it louder. So what we need to do is go to System Settings, and then we need to go all the way down to System, and if we go here, you can see that lower maximum headphone volume by default is on because Nintendo wants to protect your hearing. So if I was to turn this off, it will then go louder. It says here, set a maximum volume for headphones or speakers connected to the console's audio jack. Now if you have a look, you can see now that when I do the volume here, it's not up max anymore. So I've got all that way to go. And now listen to how much louder it is. And you can already hear it from there. There we go. So that will increase the volume by around about a third, because it goes from there all the way up to there. To calibrate the motion controls on the controllers, we need to go to System Settings, and we need to go down to where it says Controllers and Sensors, and then we need to go to where it says Calibrate Motion Controls. We need to detach the Joy-Con that we want to calibrate, and we need to hold down on, for example, this one, the plus button until it goes all the way around and it says remove any straps or accessories attached to the controller you can see there's nothing on there and we have to place it on a flat stable surface with the control stick facing up and now it just says calibration complete and now we're going to do exactly the same with the other one here so detach it press the minus button place it flat and then it will do its thing It will also work with the Pro Controller. There we go, that's how you calibrate the motion controls on all your controllers. If you would like to turn off the vibration on the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller, then we can do this via the system settings. You might want to do this because if you're playing this in a very quiet environment, even if you have the volume turned right the way down or your headphones in, you will still hear the Joy-Cons making their vibration and also the Pro Controller as well. For example, on Mario Kart, every time you pick up a coin, it sounds like you've picked up a coin. So what we need to do is we need to go to system settings 
and then we're going to go all the way down to where it says controllers and sensors and we're going to go to here controller vibration and we can turn that off and now that will not only turn it off on the joy cons here it will also turn it off when you're using the pro controller as well to delete screenshots and videos on your nintendo switch we just have to go into album and that will show you all your screenshots and videos that you've taken on the system. Now to delete them we just need to press X or you can just tap down here for delete items and then you can see it brings up these options here where we can just tap the ones that we want to delete. Now if you've made a mistake, for example if you were to tap this one and then think oh no actually I want to keep that one, just tap it again and then you can see the tick will disappear. If you're wondering which ones are screenshots and which ones are videos, well the screenshots won't have any time on them but then the videos will, so you can see here it says 30 seconds because that's a 30 second video. This one here is a 14 second video. So let's say if we were to delete that. If you're trying to free up space and by deleting the videos you're going to free up a lot more room. And then when you've got rid of everything that you want to get rid of, all you've got to do is go down to delete. And it's just going to ask you to confirm these five files will be deleted, press delete, and then they're gone. And if you're trying to free up room, when you hit delete items, it tells you here how much screenshots you got, how much videos you got, and how much space. So for example, 56.4 gigabytes, if I was to delete some videos, you can see now it will go up to 56.5. So even before I've deleted them, it's gonna tell you what you've got left. To edit a video, we need to go down to Albums and press A. And then we're going to press Y to filter the results. I'm going to go to Videos Only, so we're going to get rid of all the screenshots. Select the video you want to edit, then press A. And then pretend now we want to make this one shorter, because it's 30 seconds at the moment. We press A again to edit, and then go to Crop, A. Select the start time, the start point, press A, and then the end point. A again, and now we can save that as a new video. We will still have the original 30 second one, but now we will also have this new video here, which is only three seconds. You can see them both there. Now, if you want to watch it, obviously you're just going to press A and watch it. If you like a particular part of it, we can save it as a screenshot. So now press Y to pause it, and then if we want to edit that to save as a screenshot, we press A, save as a screenshot, A, and now it will save that part of the video as a screenshot. So if we go back now, you can see that now we have the screenshot saved there and also the three second video. If you've replaced your Pro Controller or your Joy-Cons because they went faulty, your system will still have a memory of the old ones. If you want to disconnect them completely so you don't get confused when you use, for example, search for controllers, then we can do this. So if we were to go to Home and if we were to go to System Settings, and then we're going to go down to Controllers and Sensors, and we're going to go to Disconnect Controllers. We're then going to hold down the X and it will disconnect all of the controllers that have ever been connected to this. You can see at the moment it says 10. So I'm going to hold X down X and it now says all controllers have been disconnected. You can now only use the Joy-Cons that are attached to this console. To use the other controllers you will need to pair them up again. And if I was to go to search for controllers now you will now see that there's no longer anything else connected to it. On the Nintendo Switch the LEDs on the controllers tell you what player you are. For example this is player 2 because we have 2 lights. This is player 4 because we have 4 lights. What you might not be aware of is what player 5, 6, 7 and 8 look like. So if you have a look up here closely you can see 1, 2, 3 and 4 and here we have 5, 6, 7 and 8. So if we look at this neon red Joy-Con you can see that that is actually number 5. This one here would be number 6 and if we were to have a look at the Pro Controller the two middle ones correspond to player 8. Thanks for watching.